Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I'm excited for this episode today because this episode is about understanding how our brain is processing our experience of reality and how we can see results by creating our lives by design rather than by default. This is an amazing subject for all of you metaphysicians out there because we are taught that we're virtual projectors, but we're not taught how to change the projection. So that's this conversation and my guest, Bob Doyle, will be on in just a minute. This podcast, Dare to Dream, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award, as well as having been listed recently in Welp Magazine, and we thank them as one of the top 20 podcasts to listen to this year. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They've been working with us for about seven years, eight years, and thank you to our sponsors. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. And if you are interested in becoming a facilitator or going to one of their classes anywhere in the world, go to drdanehere.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am your host, and I am a media visibility expert. I teach potential authors how to write a highly engaging book and all the time effective steps so they can take their book from idea and inception to completion and published. We have two spots open in our ongoing live class led by me because both of those authors have completed their mission. They've published their book to great success. So if you would like to claim one of those spots and come in, go to debbie-dashinger.com slash visible visionaries. It's D-E-B-B-I, D as in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash Visible Visionaries. Hope to see you there and help you get your book, your mission, your message out into the world. So yes, very excited for this episode because this guest is back for a second time, although it's been several years, so much change in between. So I am curious to find out all the new things and all the new science that he is offering. My guest is Bob Doyle, best known for his contribution to the very famous film, The Secret, and also known as a law of attraction expert and coach. Bob has been teaching these principles through programs, live events, podcasts, live streams, coaching, writing, and even virtual reality since 1998. He's driven by his passion for creative self-expression, and his work is heavily focused on helping people decide who they want to be and how they want to express themselves. Most recently, Bob's attention has shifted from the metaphysical aspects of the law of attraction, or reality creation process, to a more grounded and biological look at what controls our experiences, namely our brain. So we'll be learning much more about our brain and rewiring it. And if you'd like to learn more about him and what he offers, go to meetbobdoyle.com. It's meetbobdoyle.com. And with that, I welcome Bob to the Dare to Dream show. It's so great to have you. It is great to be back. I was thinking that the last time we were together on this program, I believe we sang, you, you had me play the ukulele and we sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Is that, I didn't hallucinate that, right? You did not. That was an amazingly memorable moment that you were so bold and you said, heck yes, when I asked you if you'd do it. It was brilliant. I thought it was a really moving moment. You brought out your ukulele, you chose that song, you very kindly asked me to join you, and we sang together. Yeah, delay and all. Yes. It's, that's one of those things I look back on and go, I can't believe I, that we did that, you know. But anyway, we did. We and did. here we are again. It only took us several years to be able to face each other again after that. And mountains of changes. So welcome back, my friend. Uh, Thank you. So great to have you. How can we discover what you're teaching is fascinating because I think it pulls back the curtain on aspects of the puzzle we're not always given as metaphysicians. So We've been unconsciously wired throughout our life. How do we discover how we've been unconsciously wired? Well, I think as we're looking at the results that we have in our lives, that is what 
mm. this is the whole thing. The reason that I, you know, I'm historically known for teaching law of attraction principles, which there's all that energy and vibration and all of that. And I found that I was spending so much time, like years, trying to get people to go, oh, I get it with the law of attraction when it's really, it's trying to, it's like trying to spend all this time understanding gravity. You don't need to understand it to, to, for the glass to hit the floor, right? And it's the same thing with the law of attraction, but we all got very sidetracked by trying to figure it out and all of that. But I, I had this sort of aha moment a couple of years ago when, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for so long and I hear the same kind of things come back from people about why this isn't working or whatever, or, or what is slowing them down. And I'm realizing that reality creation, which is what we're all trying to do with this whole law of attraction endeavor, right? We want to create our experience of reality. This moment of, well, when is reality really created? And it occurred to me that it is not when you put it on your vision board or you visualize it for the first time. It's in the moment, in this moment, like right now, when your reality is being created, it's being created based on the meaning that you're giving this moment, do I like this moment? Is it fun? Is it exciting? Am I scared? Am I nervous? Am I up? Am I down? Whatever. All of this stuff happening unconsciously, you're giving meaning in every moment to every experience of your life. And that determines really what is your life and are you enjoying it? And all of that is determined by your wiring and, and how we are programmed, as you said. So the first step to changing it is really waking up to the fact that you are wired that you are heavily programmed and that so much of what you think is free will is actually still based on your wiring, which was put there by default. And so even though you think you're choosing something, if you look deeper at what is driving that choice, you realize it's just unconscious wiring. So my work is really about helping people to tap into their true will, which comes when they acknowledge when they're on autopilot and start making different choices. It's just, we're basically teaching people how to be someone else. Just, and it's the exact same process as you learn a new language, or you learn how to cook, or you learn anything with the same stumbling blocks and challenges. We're just sending new information to our brain to rewire it. So that's mm -hmm. basically in, in a nutshell what we're doing. So this unconscious way of being out in the world that creates this reality, the contributions to that, some of them are obvious, societal, how we grew up, uh, as you said, the meaning we applied to everything, religion and et cetera. But it is, it, does it also incorporate other lifetimes, soul growth, things we came in that were weaknesses, strengths and limitations? So that is an area where I just say, you know what, someone else is going to talk about that because I try to keep my conversation really right here. And, and, all, and because I can't possibly know about a person's past life, I mean, they can do all the work or whatever, but for me as a coach to suggest and find, but I know that we can deal with what we've got right here. And if you wake up, regardless of where you came from and how it happened, it's still the result is you're wired a certain way. And the truth is your brain can change. That's really all you need to know. So if you, if you don't wanna be ruled by whatever you came in with, or whatever was was brought in when, once you got here, you can change that. Mm. But you just need to understand, okay, what? Is, how am I changing it, and why? Why is this change non-negotiable? Because that transformation, that level of transformation, is difficult because of our wiring. You, you probably know that the personal transformation industry success rate is abysmal, and this is why. Because the information can be fantastic. But if a person doesn't stick with it long enough, whatever the information is to rewire the brain, then the transformation can never be permanent or complete. You can have hooray feelings as these neurotransmitters are being shot out and you're feeling good. But unless you grow new neural pathways that replace or diminish the ones that have been ruling you, you it can't be permanent. And that's just biology. What about neuroplasticity? That's and exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. That's so, it. Mm, okay. So I want to get a little deeper into this. You have an online way for us to answer some pretty simple, fast questions. Yeah. You've got a quiz online, and it tells us what our transformation personality type is. Right. 
Right. And, and it's very nice because you, you send out a really nice report. It's not just a one pager. I mean, you really go in depth. Challenges, weaknesses, where your strengths are, the kind of personality you are. Talk about that yeah. because I think that's a great setup for people to understand this better. Great. Yeah. It, it makes my life easier and it also just gives people a lot of relief. So this transformation personality, personality type quiz is something I came up with based on 20 years of coaching people and seeing how people generally stop themselves, right? And I realized that there are at least four, but these are the main four, four type of personalities of people who undergo transformation. And even though there's nothing wrong or bad about these types, they have aspects to them that tend to get people to stop at a certain point in their journey for whatever reason. And when you can identify that you are, and that's wiring, that's programming. And when you can identify it and see it in the moment, because a lot of times we're just blissfully unaware. We just go, we don't notice how we're, auto, how, how we're in autopilot. But when we can shine a light on it and go, okay, in, in a moment of upset or disempowerment, check in and go, okay, I am now on autopilot. I am just responding to wiring. I am making autopilot meaning of this situation. What else could I choose? What other action could I take? the ideal version of me who has all that they want, what would they do in this situation? And can I take that action now? And then that's what starts the rewiring process, moving into action with that. Do you mind if I ask you which one you are of the personality types and maybe you can explain it a bit? Yes. So uh, if we want, we can invite people to go take it and then they can find out what their type is. Yeah. And then this will have a little bit more meaning. Is that okay? If I yeah, share that? please. I'm sure they so, love it. So tptquiz.com for transformation personality type quiz.com. tptquiz.com takes 60 seconds. It's free. And then if you take that and get your personality type, then a lot of what Debbie and I talk about from this point on will make, it'll have a different level of meaning to you. And I think, you know, it'd be very, very helpful because again, the first step to changing your wiring is being aware of how you're wired right now. So I am the skeptic type, ah, okay? So the skeptic, you know, the, and there's nothing wrong with being a healthy skeptic, right? It, gets, it stops you from doing a lot of stupid things in your life. Yes. But, but, the, but also it can stop you from doing really important transformational things because you're, per, if you, especially if you identify yourself as a skeptic, which mm -hmm. some people will bold, you know, just like proudly claim that, well, I'm somewhat of a skeptic. So now they have to be. And they have to run everything through this, through this, what is wrong with this? Why shouldn't I do this? And if the question is, why shouldn't I do this? That is the answer you will get back. If your question is, why should I do this? What can I get from this? Then you're going to get a different answer, most likely. So skeptics tend to ask the wrong question if they really want to grow. So it's just noticing that, like noticing, in my case, the way that I automatically said no to virtually everything that came my way, right? And just waking up and going, okay, I don't know exactly where that came from. And that's the beauty too. It, it can be helpful if you know where it came from. You can do the work to know where that came from, but it doesn't really matter. In fact, the less attention you give it, the better. You decide who do I want to be instead? And you put all your attention on that and just let that other stuff wither on the vine. You know, we get to change who we be anytime we want. And it is not one thing that we are searching for decades to find. We get to decide. That's the beauty of our brain and our imagination and the fact that we can create a vision of a future that does not yet exist and literally rehearse how to be to achieve that future. It's we're a freaking miracle. And most of us are squandering this reality creation mechanism called our brain by creating the same thing over and over again, because they are not awake. Mm. They're, they're so unconsciously yes. wired that it's all about reaction and problem solving and so on. And they can dream about the future and they can study the law of attraction for 20 years and love it and post memes all freaking day. But if they don't change who they are being, then they're never going to get different results. And, and, and so their life will stay the same. The law of attraction will work automatically without you thinking about it at all, worrying about a negative thought or is my vision board right or anything. If you just go out there and be who you are to be boldly and unapologetically, and you get the feedback from your reactions, which a lot of people would call failure or a mistake and go, well, I guess the universe doesn't want it for me, which I hear 
so many times, and I'm just, I'm called total BS on that. <laughs> just because things didn't work out the way you planned a couple of times or 10 times, we would have no technology if that was the way that the inventors of our world looked at things. And we are our greatest invention. We should take however long it takes to get where we want to go. And we can, because we can learn, we can adjust, we can keep changing our action to get where we want to go. If we don't just stop for any of the reasons, like a skeptic would stop because they just doubt it, it could be possible or whatever. Wow. I identify so much with what you just said and definitely have a healthy dose of that myself. And I concur. I think there's a beautiful gift. There's a lot of BS workshops, people, yes, whatever that I have avoided friendships, lovers, all of it. And thank you to the skeptic. And at the same time, there is absolutely that downside, the one who looks at, you know, detaches, decides, uh, shakes it up and down. And, and I have been aware of the deficit that can create in my life and consciously so that I can invite something else in. But you're talking about brain rewiring, which is way more powerful than what I've been implementing. So for somebody like you or anyone who relates to this particular type, how, is there a process that you use to rewire that skeptic and come out on the other side? Yes, you ask that different question. Instead of why is this not going to work, you ask, how can this work? Ooh, that's powerful. Yeah, you're just going to think differently. You know, skeptics are generally intelligent people. They like to analyze facts and that kind of stuff. They're logical. So it's logical to ask also, how can this help me? But they just don't look at that because that's the, it's skeptic means negative to them or whatever. But if you're really going to be logical, if you're really going to be an intelligent skeptic, you should look at both sides. So you consider fully, how can this work for me? If this worked, what would be possible? That type of thing. And you start to try that on and you feel it and you boldly take a different action. You have to, you have to try on not being skeptical if you're ever going to hope to, to reap the benefits of loosening up a little bit about that. Okay. And I just want to repeat that. I wrote it down. So the skeptic instead can ask, how can this work for me? And if this worked, what would be possible? Yeah. I, I can feel the potency of that. Awesome. I'm going to use it. And talk about some of the other personality types. Yes, let's that. do that. So mm -hmm. the number one, which I would guess that the majority of the listeners are, just because <laughs> percentage-wise it's off the charts, um, and especially if they have been historically sort of in the metaphysical conversation of the law of attraction conversation. Well, that's, I, I might be misspeaking here, but the seeker, the seeker is the type who loves personal transformation. They want to be the best that they can possibly be. They are absolutely committed to it. They post the memes, they do the whole thing, right? They try to stay positive. They do all of this stuff, but, and they want to try everything. Every approach that comes out, oh, I saw the secret, this movie, and da, da, da. oh, here's a, wait, there's another movie, and this book says it's the secret behind the secret, and wait a second, this one says the secret's nonsense, and here's, and, and there's, uh, uh, and they just jump around, enthusiastic, and all kinds of committed, until something else comes along, or until they reach the limits of their wiring, and then they get challenged, and they go, I don't know if I can take the action that I'm required to take here, oh, here's an easier program, this, this only, this says three days, so I'll go do this one. So that's why the seeker never gets rewired and never gets their results. Mm. They have defined themselves. They have become a person who is working on themselves instead of being themselves. Mm. So pre-COVID, this is such a perfect example, a way to typify and explain people I've seen who are I call workshop junkies. Yeah. You see them at one workshop, they're rushing to the back of the room to buy the next thing and the next person and they never implement. They don't stop long enough to integrate and become something else. That's problematic. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's, it's why it's why none of this, again, this is just what stops them. Right. You know, the skeptic is stopped by the, well, I don't think it's going to work. The seeker gets stopped because they get distracted. Mm. The the next one, which is closely sort of related to the to the seeker, which is why I could hit him and hot a little bit, is the wizard type. Mm. Very big in the law of attraction community. And it basically, and again, I, I don't, I really want to be clear that there's nothing wrong. And I don't mean to be talking down to the wizard type because there's a big part of that in me as well. It's the, it's sort of the magical thinker. 
about all of this. You know, you see the secret, there's a genie, I, you know, the, the kid had a bike. It just seems like there's some magic involved. And so that's why people are, are u- utilizing the law of attraction like they're casting a spell and they want to get it just right. And if it didn't work, it's because they were doing something wrong and all of that stuff. That, But it basically, when you look at the psychology of magical thinking, it's just sort of an expectation that something out there is going to happen and you don't have to do much. And that's that, you know, and of course that can sometimes work. And when, when, it, when they have that, those moments when things just align effortlessly and they have what seems like a magical moment, then it's like, oh, wow, it's magical, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always turn out that way. And then, so if they just decide that that's the way it's always going to be, and they never have to take action or they don't have to change any way of their being and the, the world will just change for them, then they get frustrated and they go, my vision board's broken, whatever. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is good. I had a potential client call this morning, and I'm starting to identify the person I had that lovely call with is this someone who wants to write a book wants to join my book writing class. But yeah, was waiting for the sign, right? Was waiting. Yes, it's like yes. you got it. <laughs> if you're here having this conversation, if you got the download, if you got the inspiration, you got it. Right? It's so true. That is a great point. The whole signs thing. You know, we create our own signs, we give ourselves our own tests, and we're deciding whether or not we are worthy or not because it's not an issue. The deserving has nothing to do with this. We are a, we are a, a natural outgrowth of the universe itself. We give the universe a way to experience itself in the physical and have all the emotional experiences and all the joys of having a human of the human experience. And there are many. And and we've been given the gift of creating it. We've given we've been given every single tool we need. And over the course of history, we've been dumbed down. And now this, this most natural way of being, the most natural thing in the world to create your reality has become some sort of mystical something or other that needs to be scrutinized. Mm-hmm. And then it got in the law of attraction conversation. And of course, there's all sorts of scrutiny there. Look, one of the main reasons I love talking about neuroplasticity so much is it's not freaking debatable. I don't have to spend hours on a panel going back and forth about the law of attraction. Well, yeah, but what about this? Well, they didn't attract this. Does anybody here want to transform themselves instead of giving the law of attraction a trial? It's like, it, that's just the, the attention was so wrong. And even with the brain approach that I'm taking, I'm not spending tons of time going, here's this, is this, this part of the brain and this part of the brain, and here's how it all works. Because it, in the end, it doesn't freaking matter. What matters is only one thing. Your brain can change. Great. What do we need to do to change it? Let's do those things. That's it because we weren't born with the need to understand the physics of any of this stuff. Mm. We were just born with the ability to do it, but we unlearned it. But now that we know, once you know, once you see how you've been wired, then that's all, there's no excuses. It is your responsibility now to take proactive uh, part in changing the direction of your life. Okay, so we've got the skeptic, we've got the seeker, we've got the wizard. Yes. Who else? What other this thing? one's going to hit home with a lot of people I know. This is the last one, and it's the people pleaser. Mm. And these are people with huge hearts, right? They, they don't want conflict, but they have a dream. They want something bigger than they've ever had before. And they're all about it. They do all the stuff up until the moment when somebody in their life has a problem with it. They give them a look, they say something, they say, here are you to do that. In some way, shape or form, they are meant to feel bad about going forward in their dream because it's making someone else uncomfortable. And this is so freaking pervasive. It stops people from their dreams because mom's going to get upset. And if they wait too long, then they're going to wire it right out of themselves, the dream in the first place. And the thing is, is that when, when you stop your dream so that other people become more comfortable, nobody wins. And guess what? They're not comfortable. (laughs) If they were comfortable, they wouldn't have any reason to squash your dreams. So nobody's comfortable. You don't get to live your life. They're not living their lives and show no signs of doing it. The only way they stand a chance is probably you going and doing it and showing them it can be done. But the people pleaser is all about making everybody else happy first, comfortable first. And there's some issue of deserving and worth. There's all kinds of under stuff, you know, that drives a people pleaser that makes them feel like they have to overcompensate that way and so on. But the point is that 
is a huge thing that stops people. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one because there's so much emotion in our relationships. When you get to that point, when it's like, I'm either going to follow my dream or this relationship that is very important to me and I've had my whole life or recently or whatever it is, may very well fall away. That is a freaking crossroads. But a lot of what we've learned about the sadness of that and the gravity of that and the devastation of that is also just learned. It really, what's really happening is you're doing something and then they're not doing it with you. Every bit of emotion we put into it based on the meaning that we give it. So we can decide just how upset we need to be, how devastated, how stopped, how paralyzed we are. We need to be because this relationship evolved. Plus, you never know how it's going to come back around later. Following your dream, following what is in there to do is the best way to service everybody the most. Hmm. That is so powerful. And I could see why people pleaser would be really difficult when you talk about their big open heart and then all the underpinnings, because that's not just I follow my dream or I live with regret. That is now you truly do have a crossroads of I have this relationship I've been invested in. It's meaningful to me for whatever reason, and I potentially could lose it and all all the ramification that includes just by following what I feel I need to do, what I'm driven to do, why I'm here. And that's a that's really difficult. And I like also the idea that you're saying it's not an end all be all. You know, things change. Life is fluid. Somebody can heal, come back into our lives. We could find somebody better. And there's a million options when we trust what we've been given. I always say if you've been given the dream, you've also been given the salt and pepper to cook it and put it out in the world. Since I did the test, the put together that quiz, I'm, you know, different types are sneaking up on me that I think, oh, I might want to add that one. I might want to add that one. And one of them is kind of like the psychic, the one who just knows how it's all going to work. Like, no, I can't do that because here's what's going to happen, right? And that's the thing is we don't know what's going to happen, but we are very good at predicting it based on our programming. We've got all this data Mm -hmm. and it's just like we're running a program, given this data, given this data and my, the meaning that I give it, these are the possible outcomes, but somebody else with different wiring will get the same data, process it differently, come up with a whole new set of outcomes. So that very important distinction of truth and what is it and is it at all is huge because you know most of the problems we have in our world today is because everybody's got their own version of truth and theirs of course is the right one and we can't understand how that other person could possibly have that truth given all of this evidence and they're looking at all the same stuff and coming up with a completely different truth who's right nobody right there isn't one it's all a bunch of meaning that people are making out of just situations and we're fighting wars and ending relationships and god you see it because everybody sees different versions of the truth and it's just wiring that's all it's just this how we process it and what we choose to to do with our time and how we are what is the conversation that we're having with ourselves most of the time and if you're a person who is caught up in the angst of the world you're spinning that conversation those conversations constantly you are building those neural pathways into your and you are going to be a person who is in alignment with all of that and you're going to continue to get those results this is real stuff it's not like hey you really shouldn't watch the news if it upsets you hey you really shouldn't it's like no if you're going to rewire your brain you can't do any of that You don't have the luxury of basking in negativity if who you want to be is a positive person and a positive the people out there who are being who you want to be and how they're being they're not doing the behavior you're doing because they can't be both and that's when you wake up to that when you really get like oh yeah i can't do this and be that it's again it's just logical it's not magic it's not the lesson that the universe is teaching you it's just you can't be wired for both Right. So to not perpetuate what our personality type has been having us live through, as you said, over and over again, to step out of that paradigm into something new, it's about choosing, like making those hard choices. This doesn't serve me, clearly. And so I want to create a big, awesome life. I need to rewire my brain. There's different things I can do. So are you saying that in every every report that's received when we fill out that quiz, we 
receive all the information about our type so we can identify, and then we also receive the solutions? Yes, definite ways to take that information and become aware. Because again, so much of this is just about awareness. And then it's like, when you become aware, now what? Right. So the work that I do with people in, in the long term when we're working together is about that. It's about being prepared for those moments when you see yourself and when you get yourself in autopilot, when you catch yourself moving into observation mode. Truly just pure consciousness, really, we're, we're teaching you to get fully present mm. because most of the time we're sitting there, we're worried about the future path, you know, the whole cliche, but it's true. But what we do when we get that, when we when we learn to get triggered by our own upset to step out and, and be objective and go, here it is. This is, and you just observe yourself. This happened, this happened. I responded like this. How would I rather respond? And to know what to do in that situation is key because otherwise you're just like, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna go back to what I always do. So, so much of our work is about knowing ahead of time, how are you going to respond in various situations where you're typically disempowered. We do that by creating that ideal version of yourself and decide their traits and see their traits logically and how they get the results they do. And then, you know, get you into practice with rehearsing being that, identifying the gap. Where are you now compared to where you need to be? And when here's the beauty. You can practice out in the real world, obviously, when you get into a situation and you check your wiring and you go, oh, I'm getting in response mode. Now I'm going to be this instead. But you also get to rehearse that whenever you want, when you've got downtime. And so what we do is we have our folks do it in the morning, in the afternoon. It's part of a daily thing that we do, but it's all about visualization. And visualization is hugely powerful. It's Again, it's not some woo-woo thing. It's a wiring thing visualization is not about assembling particles out in the universe to do your bidding. It is about wiring yourself to be the person who will get the results that you're seeing in the vision. You embody that, you learn it, you rehearse it. Every morning you look at your day and you go, what have I got ahead? Oh, that thing where I usually go down this road. I'd like to go down this road today. Let's rehearse it and run it and run it. And we get to do that. And in that process, we are rewiring. We're, we're, that's real brain activity with chemistry and everything. And then we're better equipped when we get into the situation because maybe we've rehearsed it a dozen different ways and we're ready for just about anything. And then we take that different action. And then the world, the universe, the people, have no choice but to respond differently. If you be differently, you, they can't give you the same response that they've always done. And so you begin the change and the ripple begins. That action starts to manifest things out in the world that is congruent with who you're being now. And you just have to stay consistent with it and let the excitement of seeing it happen build and keep you in it. Oh, I, I so appreciate your speaking to this. I just went through something very akin to this uh, enormously triggering situation with someone I'm really close with. I mean, really triggering and very powerless experience. And I knew because I have enough wise people in my corner and gifted people who are saying, if you could be this, you will have a good outcome. And I have to say, I knew truth. I knew they were all speaking truth, but to make that jump out of trigger and into a behavior that actually was not indigenous to me in that situation, there was so much heart and caring that, um, yeah, it was a very rocky road for a long time. I will say that I finally have made my way here and it took a lot of gestalt. It took a lot of uh, conversation and many things to get here. So I love the fact that you're giving something concrete like visualization, this is a powerful tool. This helps the rewiring. So for anybody who is listening and says, I'm, I'm a skeptic, I'm a seeker, I'm a wizard, I'm a people pleaser, I'm a psychic, and I do have these issues and I am in this situation, what other ways can we bridge the gap so we can get from where we are to the reality we really prefer to be and who we really prefer to be acting as? 
Well, so obviously that is, that's what my work is. That is, I facilitate that for people. And I feel like, so what we do is we put a daily structure in place of things that they do every day, but it only takes like 10 minutes to do the things. But the work, if you will, is all day. It's really about, all the other stuff is about helping you to become more aware when you're in autopilot and knowing what to do so that you can be that. The other stuff that we do, like those visualization exercises in the morning and the evening, all of our meditation library, our journaling, and, and, the, and then everything we do in the community is there to make sure that people do this every day. So, because that's the, that's the key. If you, don't, if you try to do it on your own, you have a 93% chance that you're gonna fail because of whatever your type is, is gonna kick in at some point and give you a good, solid, evidence-based reason why you don't need to spend another moment on this brain rewiring thing. But that is your wiring. And that's why it's so hard. You know, you were talking about your situation. When you are in an upset, you are, it, it's, it, it's one thing to notice it. But as you, as you mentioned, we are flooded with chemistry at that point. It's so difficult to override that, especially if you're not really clear on how and why and the benefits of overriding it. Because you'll get so caught up in the emotion and you won't see any other way to be except the way that you've known. So that's why the rehearsal of a different way is so important so that you have at least something to try on. So yes, visualization, an overlooked tool that I think that people just do every now and then, but it's actually, I mean, you could use it whenever you wanted to and know that you are you are making absolute changes in what's going to occur out there, but not because you're shooting law of attraction rays out there, you're making changes in here, how you're going to perceive this ocean of energy. Because remember, we're all just energy too. And, and our entire sense, sensory system is just energy too. And so we're all clustered so that we can take this ocean of energy we live in and interpret it into physical things and sounds and tastes and, and the whole thing. But it's all just energy. And when you mentioned, Bob, how you work with people and the protocol you set up, and of course, anyone who's hearing 10 minutes you know, a day or a couple of times a day, that's pretty good for such big results. Is this group work that you do with people and or is it private work? Yeah, everybody has their own journey, but we come together as a group. The community is actually a huge part of it because, and everybody's at a different step in the journey. So it's a 45, it starts with 45 days. Most people do, you know, they stay on, you have that option because the support is great. But, but it, the first round basically is a 45 day thing and everybody's at a different sort of a journey. So you can hear from people who have been there, done that. And then, you know, you're getting support and giving support and all that. So it's really nice to have people in. But yes, the community is huge. And part of the program that we do is we give points for completing these tasks. It's not just we say, do these and trust you because people just don't. It's just with no matter well intention. We give you a reason to do it. And every time you check something off, you get a cha-ching and you get some points which earn you other things like programs and coaching and different things like that. So people just love to get their points and they should. And part of their points is going to the group every day and posting a, what we call a win. And a win in my case is that you caught yourself. And then what was the situation and what did you do? So every day they have a stock, they have their a reason to go in there and acknowledge their success, acknowledge how they are being rewired and getting the support. So all of these things, the typical person going through any program on their own will not get. And every week we have live coaching. So, you know, we go back and forth on some laser coaching. So everybody gets tended to, and there's Q and A and I'm in the group all the time. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of online, my stuff online ever since like live streaming came to be and growing communities is, is one of my strong points, communities that are safe and everybody loves each other and no one wants to leave at the end and all of that stuff, because, you know, we're just real in there, you know, we're just really real in there. And we, there, we have very strong um, parameters around you know, how we're being with one another and the languaging and everything, because I am there. I am really committed. The reason rewiring is so powerful is, is extreme significant transformation is possible. And that's what I'm committed to. Not just like, oh, my day got a little bit better. That's fine. And, and I'm happy to help you make your day a little bit better and a little bit lighter and maybe get some stress off your, but if you, if you really want to transform into something extraordinary, just know that the only thing between you and that is some time and some action. And, and you can't compare your journey with anybody else's because they all had different wiring. So just stop that right now. Start the journey that you're being called to do. And by the way, halfway there, you may realize, oh, 
I did all this because here's my real journey that shows itself halfway through and you'll know. And, but you'll never get there if you don't take that journey. So you just don't get attached to things. You just are here to enjoy like the creative expression of you. You pursue what's inside you to pursue. You attract the people who believe in what you're doing and let the other people fall away. Because remember, you're either going to settle in with the people, please, you're going to settle in with the crowd that is right where they are. Maybe that's mediocre. Maybe it's less, maybe whatever it is, or they're going to move on and get people. And if you just be who you're here to be, you will find the right people and you will be surrounded with the energy that supports you and believes in you and is a stand for what you want. And my God, it, it won't be, you know, you'll forget all about the negative feelings about the other the other relationships, they'll get wired right out of you. It's not like you're going to forget them, but you won't have that emotional attachment because you'll realize, wow, that didn't serve me at all. Bob, if I may be so bold, I think you speak from experience. What I are think you talking you've... about? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, think I generally do. I generally do. And you have intimate knowledge of taking a stand for yourself, making really big, bold choices, changing things up probably going through discomfort i'm imagining can you speak oh, yeah. to that a little well so discomfort first of all is is something you can celebrate instead of dread mm -hmm. it, because i just want to remind everybody that learning in general involves some discomfort it's like oh i don't know this thing and now i have to go get the information or whatever and it's a little uncomfortable as the neural pathways are growing so discomfort is a natural part of growth and most of the time in your life you just do it you don't give a thought about it because it's just part of it but when it comes to our personal transformation oh i don't want to be uncomfortable it means the universe doesn't want it for me or any of that stuff when you get uncomfortable it means you're there it means you're there at the out at the outer limits of your current wiring and now you can push. Now you can grow. If you don't get here, you can't grow. So nothing's going to change until you get here. So when you get uncomfortable, you should be going, yes, good, thank you. Bring it. And I have people who are doing my challenge. It's called the Balanced Loving Challenge. And there are people who get in there and then they, they'll have a few days where they go, you know, I'm really not feeling any sort of negative feeling right now. I'm not sure, you know, how to post a win because everything is good. I'm like, okay, good. It's time to bigger, bigger because you're getting comfortable. I know you're not where you came here to be. So you're in a holding pattern right now. It's time to think bigger, be bigger. Think on the, what is this person in the future doing that you're not doing right now because you're basking in the glow of not having a negative thought for a few days or whatever. Go do that thing and let's get you rewired. Yeah. To shift a little bit, you did this post on LinkedIn and it was called, what would your future self tell you? And it was about contemplating what your future self would tell us about our current us or you. Tell, talk about that, how that works. What is the power of the potency there? Well, I love, I love imagining scenarios like that because they, they really are. Because, you know, I, like I say, I like to stay on this plane as much as possible. But I also love to think about things like time and dimension and that type of thing. You know, not, not as much past lives, but... But when we have a thought and we imagine ourselves in the future, we can kind of construct that. Like that just sort of happens in our brain to some extent, like because our brain has all the information. It's just subconscious. Our brain knows like the ideal version of ourselves based on our passions, based on our goals, the things that we really want deep inside. Just because we can't consciously construct it or describe it, it's all in there. So if we set an intention to project in my imagine this ideal version of myself, you can kind of let go and trust that that might be pretty close. So with that wisdom, you can sort of like put your mind in the mind of that future self and talk to this incarnation. You can have these imaginary conversations and that stuff, that's real brain activity and you're transferring real information. And by the way, you don't worry about, well, I won't, I don't know what that person would say. You just make it up. Just let it flow. What might that person say to you about, you know, being present more or not worrying so much or a bazillion other things? I honestly can't. I know I must have used an example for myself. I remember that Instagram post, but I can't even remember what I said about that. But I do know that any of those imaginary type of conversations it can be huge. I mean, Napoleon Hill even talked about the mastermind and lots of people talk about that. You know, just imagining being in a room with these people, with these great minds and borrowing their genius. And it's amazing what can come from that. 
another exercise is like you're being interviewed. Uh, it's, it's the future. You've arrived and you're being interviewed by a magazine who wants to know your story. Tell it. And then you just get into imagination mode and you just play with it. And it just because the details don't matter. It's the feeling that you get as you're describing it, because that's the being part. It doesn't matter the details of everything you did. Well, first I was in this magazine and I wrote this book. Do what, say whatever you need to, to bring the feeling of that current person, because then you can bring the memory of that feeling into your today when you're not doing that visualization. And then that you are 100% more likely to get the results that you talked about in that imagination. But, but certainly similar feelings, certainly similar responses because of the energy that you're taking out into the world. And are these brain hacks that you're sharing right now? I call them brain hacks, I guess. I mean, because I mean, I feel like they're shortcuts because most people are just going on autopilot. They don't have the information to know that they can actually override what they think is their conscious thinking, which is actually on autopilot and choose something different. Hmm. So for folks who want to take that quiz, I just want to reiterate, it's tptquiz.com. You can find out which personality type you are and get your report. I urge you to do that. And, you know, in the beginning when I read your bio, Bob, virtual reality was in there and that really caught my attention. I recently went with my partner to something called Dreamscape. I think they have like five throughout the country, but it's a virtual reality experience. And we mm -hmm. did an undersea one. And I have to say uh, way beyond what I expected. Um, I already know now <laughs> the gift I want for the holidays is definitely it's around virtual reality because I literally experience the possibilities by using that. I don't even know if that's what you're about, but I will say it completely changed me doing yes, that. Yes, I had the same experience and I knew that I would because I think people like us are just going to see that kind of potential. I mean, being in the law of attraction conversation and it's all about visualization and, and, and imagining it as real as possible. Well, I mean, come on, you don't get much more than virtual reality. You put on a headset and you're there. Yeah. You hear it, you see it, you can set up things in the room to smell it, you can do all. So I always thought that it would be awesome as a powerful visualization tool and have been pursuing it. You know, I just originally I got interested because I thought, well, Boundless Living, my company will develop it, we'll do it. But then so many people were so far ahead of me doing amazing things with meditation apps and so on, different scenarios and just all kinds of great stuff. I thought, well, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it and be an advocate for it, which which I am. There is a lot of transformation to be had. In, in VR, in addition to just amazing mind altering experiences. And, and it does give you a, a scope of things. If you ever get a chance to get into Google Earth, which is a free application. If you've ever played with Google Earth on your phone, it's, you know, it's a 3D representation of the entire Earth. Well, imagine being able to fly around the Earth in virtual reality, Superman style to anywhere you want to go and land in the street. That's what is possible right now. And so the, the amount of time I've spent in that app, especially when it first came out years ago, was a ridiculous hundreds of hours because I could go anywhere, type in an address, boom, I'm in front of my, the house I grew up in, mm. right? It's, it's so it's, it's, and it gives you just such different perspective on reality. And then you can start going, okay, are we a simulation? And then that's another whole. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. But I, yeah, just to speak to what you're saying, I so agree. It was beyond for me. Visualization can be difficult for me to be immersed in something where I literally had a whale swimming by me yes. that looked me right in the eye. I was crying. I was like, that was my was first it? experience too. That yeah. exact one with that whale. Oh, and it wow. was, it was, you know, you just, and they know that, of course. They go, oh, why when people see this? And, and that eye comes right up there and blinks at you or moves around a bit and you just go, I am in, right? Yes, yeah. I was in, yeah, the little seal too, who puts their face uh, right by yours and connects with you. And the next night we did a sound bath healing and the woman guided us through a meditation. Now visualization is not always my easiest or my strongest point, but I went so, so deeply. So something got released by doing that. And I really realized if I continue to immerse myself at some level in this, yeah, I could talk about rewiring. I could completely change things around. Yes. 
Yes, and, I, I think it's we're just scratching the surface on the transformational because right now a lot of people are just kind of doing meditation apps and things like that, but it could go so much deeper with the right tools and things like that. But the technology is amazing for what it is, for what you can buy for a few hundred dollars and not need a computer or anything and jump in and have some amazing experiences. It's, it's staggering. So I'm excited. I love that. And you also talk about manifesting on autopilot. What a big word for people, right? Manifesting, because everybody wants to, right? You have a well, desire. Well, here's the, here's the tricky part of that statement is you are right now, you're manifesting everything. And mm -hmm. by the way, you're doing it on autopilot. So ha ha, terrific. You're already manifesting on autopilot. So the key is let's manifest what you want on autopilot. And the way, and the reason that it's autopilot is because this is how you are wired. So mm -hmm. if you want it to feel autopilot, the stuff you love, then let's wire yourself to that person, attract that stuff. And then that will feel as effortless as whatever this is. So it's, it's, we're just effortlessly going through subconsciously creating whatever it is, whether we like it or not. So I figure let's get in there and be proactive with the wire and create what we want and make that autopilot effortless. Yeah, big. Uh, you started this out by mentioning ukulele. So I just have to, because I'm curious, are you still playing music? Are you still- More than ever. Really? I, I would say probably on average 90 minutes a day I spend on that thing. Oh. Since, since, since you and I last connected on that, I mean, I've made all new levels of commitment to getting excellent on that thing and learning all new things and playing melodies instead of chords and really mm -hmm. just getting good at it. And so, you know, I still have all sorts of weird angst about playing for people and recording as soon as I hit record, my fingers lock. But when I'm, but as far as just sitting around and playing, it is what I would do all day, every day, if I could, because the flow, the energy that flows through when I'm in like the zone, regardless of what people would think of my zone, it's, it's, in, it's, kind of, it's just basically indescribable. So yeah, it is still my favorite thing to do. And also since we last talked about a year ago, somebody made a custom one for me. It took them four years to build it and it is gorgeous. It's the only one I play. It's got my old Bob Doyle show logo inscribed in it. It's, it's a freaking work of art and it sounds amazing. So yes, I'm still way into it. Do you do any recordings where people can hear this? I, I, on Facebook, there's like a, there's, I have a, I don't tell anybody about it, but I'll tell you there cause it's, it's searchable, but it's like, I think it's like Bob Doyle ukulele practice stream and every, it's been forever since I've done it, but I'll just, if I want to just noodle around and practice just what I do every day, I'll just turn on the phone and just hit go. And it just goes to this group and people can watch or not. I don't feel obligated to host or talk or any of that. Cause that's what gets in my head about it. Like I need to forget that people are watching. But it's out there. And of course, you know, YouTube has all my old stuff from a million years ago, which now I cringe because I go, I would never play it like that now. <laughs> right. Because you're constantly growing. I mean, if you're putting in 90 minutes a day, yeah, it's, to your passion, you are changing yeah. rapidly. Yeah, it's a, I think I got those 10,000 hours. And I know because things can things happen. And this, please, God, I just don't want to sound like this is an ego thing, but it's, I'm just a, a testament to if you do something like that repeatedly, that 10,000 hours that they say, just stuff starts happening that you cannot explain. Like my fingers just go here. I hear the thing and I just know what to do. And after years of like trying to figure it out and all that, now it just like happens. And I think you sort of, you know, you earn that to some degree with your wiring and all of that, and you get into that autopilot mode. So it's just so if there's something you love in your life like that, it's so worth putting in the hours, because when you hit a point like that, where you never thought you'd be, mm -hmm. and I certainly qualify, never thought I'd do that. It's such a like, again, it just tells you, well, what else is possible in my life? If I put the time into it, what else could I do? Yes, yes, 100%. So this is Dare to Dream. What are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals, Bob? Well, this Balanced Living Challenge, the way that I'm helping people now is like my big professional sort of vision right now and, and growing that because I, I really think that of all the work I've done in 20 years, I know it's the most effective in terms of just helping people quickly. It just gets right to the point and I love it. And I, it, it, it speaks to all of my, I like, I like doing the community stuff. I live stream my Q&A, which I love doing that stuff. So it keeps me in that. So growing that is something. I have other endeavors with my partner, Tracy, that are not related to this at all, which, you know, we're, we're looking to, to put together. So I've just got all sorts of fun projects that are always sort of presenting themselves and 
you know, I still do voiceover and there's just lots, lots going on. But right now, I think the challenge is my focus because it's just exciting to see what people are doing with it. And what do you do every day so that you stay grounded, so that you stay connected and flow? What kind of rituals or practices? Didn't I mention 90 minutes of ukulele? <laughs> yes, you did. That is the most, that is the most grounding thing. Mm. Now, I, I will say there is a time, though, when the flow gets going and the energy gets going, that it becomes like a somewhere else type of thing. And I'll stop playing and I have to, I have to reground. But that is, that is something. And, and I, you know, <laughs> I have goofy hobbies with um, um, artificial intelligence and faces. My Instagram page, not the Bob yes, Will from do, the I've seen. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. But I, you know, that also, it's a very, it's just a highly creative endeavor and creativity brings me into the moment. And I spend my days in a lot of those moments. So, yeah, it's just, right. uh, I've just, just really, I guess, to answer your question, if I had to now bring it down, it's just honoring my creativity as many times, as much as I can during the course of the day brings me present. I'm going to assume when you say that, that honoring your creativity and the skeptic are completely separate entities, because from what you're describing and what I've seen of you and from you over the years, to really make that commitment to your own expression, to you know your song out in the world, so to speak, mm. is probably the other flip side of the skeptic. Would you agree? So the, I'm, well, how can this work for me? Or how can, how can I make this work? I think I asked myself early in the, in the Uke journey, it's like, I'll never be as good as that person or whatever. Like, I'll, like, I remember I used to watch YouTube videos of some guy who used to play the melodies of stuff. And I go, God, I don't know if I could ever be that good until I made the decision. I'm gonna, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And so it just, it changed everything. It changed my commitment. It changed my behavior. It changed my, my attitude towards practicing and making the mistakes and taking the journey. Like I love learning these new songs and making the mistakes. Like there's no part of it that frustrates me. If it's really hard and knuckle busting, it's like, man, when I get that and there's stuff I've been working on for like a year that I made up and I still can't play it smoothly. But when I do, oh, it's going to be so worth it. So those those types of little rewards in life are a big part of my day. I know that this conversation is going to help so many people on so many different levels. Thank you for being you. Thank you for coming back to the show and for this conversation. Well, thanks for asking me. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So folks who want to follow up and learn more, go to meet Bob Doyle, D O y l e dot com and again his test tpt quiz dot com enjoy that and i end today's show with this quote from Ginny ramati the only way you survive is if you continuously transform into something else it's this idea of continuous transformation that makes you an innovation company Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear this number one weekly transformation conversation. My guest next week is Lori Brinkman. She's an avatar master and, of course, facilitator of consciousness and belief management. And if you're enjoying this podcast and you'd like to see myself and the guest, and I suggest you do, hop on over to YouTube, check us out, subscribe, leave a review. I read them all. I am at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And for all of you out there, I really welcome you to not just dare to dream, but to actually figure out who you are, what's hindering you from being that giant ver vision of yourself, that version that Bob talked about, that's actually already inside and give birth to it. You can check out his work at meetbobdoyle.com. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to dare to dream and create all your dreams into your reality.